Yes, how are you doing? And hi, everybody. Hello, I am doing well. Today, we're going to talk about celebrity fragrances. We have so many of them and some we like, some we don't. What do you like? And what is your view on celebrity fragrances? I'm curious, but I'm picky. I feel like sometimes they just crank out flanker after flanker just to keep the cash cow mm -hmm. mooing. I'm not a fan of that. I like to see a little bit of creativity, something unique in what they're doing rather than that overly sweet, candy, syrupy stuff that we've had. But I feel like there's good news on the horizon. I think that there are some that are starting to branch out a little and become a little deeper, huskier. Uh, yeah, because the fragrance landscape is changing. I so think moms are not so in anymore. Yeah, celebrity fragrances is just such a category that shouldn't really exist, if you ask me. <laughs> but you can't forbid them doing it, right? Especially it's such a good source of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mostly commercial because it's not what they are known for. But there are celebrities and celebrities so some you like and you appreciate what they're doing and the other one like oh my god guys like act play sing <laughs> it's a consumable product so once the yep. perfume is gone somebody will go and buy it and oh what's that we've got number two number three here next to it well i might as well get those two i've often wondered what the percentage is of each bottle of perfume goes into their own pocket. How much they are involved in the creating. So no, that's how much money they make per bottle. Like a dollar? I guess we will never know because the price of the perfume is composed of different things. So it has to be sold to distributor and distributor has to sell it in stores or distribute some other way and um, for example kim kardashian she started first of celebrities to sell it directly to consumer from her website and that for the producer i mean she's a brand owner so that's the best way for her money wise so right um, now we have um, Billie Eilish joining in. So she has also that strategy of direct to consumer selling perfumes. It hasn't been launched yet. And yeah. with vanilla, that's, that's all we know so far. I wish we had had an advanced copy of that one because we could have discussed that for the last podcast on vanilla. Sometimes when I see there's just one note, I'm like vanilla, like, okay, guys, like that's <laughs> I like vanilla. I love vanilla, but I want a little bit more going on. And I'm sure there is. I don't know how I feel about that trend where perfumers or the marketers are pushing everything down into three notes, a top, a mid and a base. I'm the kind of person I kind of like to see those really long Mm -hmm. pyramids i guess we have just a couple of notes and they also in the name of the fragrance very often just for people to don't lose time to know what they're smelling so this is like grapefruit vanilla i mean something like that and you smell grapefruit and vanilla you get what you wanted <laughs> what you read in the name and that's it so it's just quicker consuming like quicker choice because a real perfume you have to smell, wear, associate with something and stuff like that. And with um, quick something like celebrity fragrances or mass market or even designer fragrances, we have a number of perfumes named as you should smell them with a couple of ingredients or with one ingredient. And you approximately know, should I come and smell that rose or should I choose something else like woods? Or mosses that kind of takes them this is very very boring actually. yes it is i was thinking boring but there's no mystery involved you reviewed that fenty one which looking at the bottle this is something different and i really enjoyed it and i came to liking it uh, from resisting so fenty beauty so far i have vial of perfume and um i didn't like it at first because of that my bias towards um celebrity perfumes but rihanna is rihanna She's super talented and really smart. So Fenty is a um, perfume that is not typical celebrity fragrance. It's a very powerful rose fruity umber. I would describe it like that. Electric, synthetic and natural with addition of such uncommon for celebrity fragrances ingredients like woody, foresty geranium. There is a roughness and because of that, meeting with raspberry, it creates blueberries actually in, inside the fragrance. So, Oh, that it, sounds good. It's really that. It's a good fragrance and I'm waiting to get it in my hands, the full bottle. But so far, 
it's sold out and it's quite hard to find. The full bottle can be found at Sephora. Eventually, not yet. I believe that on their website also it's not yet available, but it will be because okay. Fenty is Sephora's brand. That one surprised me, the Fenty Beauty Fragrance, and I would recommend it, even if it's not your style, your perfume, it's interesting. Just a minute ago, you said they like that simplistic approach of putting what it is in the name, like grapefruit vanilla or whatever, mm -hmm. because then people know what they're getting. However, I have... The KKW Kim Kardashian West Nude Essentials Collection. I have all four. One of them is called Nude Soleil. So Soleil is French for sun. It's and a beautiful bottle, by the way. Is it glass? Yeah, they're all glass. They, they're glass. I feel like because it's called Nude, I... I like that glossy lacquer nail polishy kind of look, but I feel like since it's called Nude... I wish they had put these bottles and wrapped them in that, like the other one, like a matte kind of rubber. Some, some kind of modern ceramic material. Porcelain resin or something. Yeah. I wish they had done that with these. So it's called Nude Soleil. It's got sun in the name. It doesn't smell sunny to me. And what's weird is there's another one. I think it's Nude Sand that has the solar note. This nude sand is more solar. It's sunnier than nude soleil. Nude suede is my particular favorite in this collection, I believe, which surprised me because I typically don't like those suede leather kind, but it doesn't smell like suede, but it feels suede-like. And I don't know how to explain that any better. That it's deeper, I guess, because it's fall, it's autumn, and it's got some like gentle spices in it. It evokes autumn. They are all these four fragrances. They are all inspired by skin. Yes, they are. But they are and all solar. And so no, 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 they're not all solar. I feel like it warm? smells like heat, like warm, musky skin, maybe that has a slight perfumey tint to it. So like you left your house to go to the beach, maybe with remnants of the perfume on you applied earlier in the day. And so you <laughs> spent the day out at the pool in the sun and you got a little sweaty Mm -hmm. And I feel like to me, that's what solar is. But these aren't all solar. They're just minimalistic. Like in the forums, they have a phrase called an easy reach. I think that's kind of what these were supposed to be in our easy reaches. So you got a, maybe an interview or something. You've got on a sharp pair of slacks, a crisp white shirt, maybe a gold necklace, a bracelet, cute little handbag and some heels and you're headed out the door. You don't want anything like Fenty, something that's kind of <laughs> weird. Depends. You want subtle. <laughs> you want something that when people pass you by, they're like, she smells good. She doesn't smell like perfume, but she smells good. And that's kind of the, what I think this collection is trying to evoke are oh, just a good. feeling of, she smells good. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's very subtle. These, I will say they wear a very long time, but they're intimate. These are not beastly at all. They're not going to gas everybody out, but they wear a long time. It's just close. I but like that kind of fragrances. It, yes. it actually, it's supposed to be like that because when they yell and on a long distance about yeah. you, about your presence, it's just not tasty. I sometimes I like that. Most <laughs> of the time I'm by myself. Yeah, because then I smell myself coming and going up and down the hallway. Everything has its place. Which one do you like the most? The nude suede. It's very fall-like. It's balsamic. It's not spicy, but it's got a gentle autumnal spice flow in it. It's very musky. It smells really good. It smells like your skin, but better. And a lot of times in the forum, people are always asking for fragrance recommendations. What is like my skin, but better? That would be these four. From that family, I have also a couple of fragrances. And so one of them is this one. I can't resist. I can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this hilarious bottle. There are three of them and this one is nude. And this is a regular vanilla musky fragrance with some flowers and a plasticky feeling that are like dolls. I find it attractive. So nothing like groundbreaking except the bottle. I don't like the bottle. It's, uh, 
I don't know how many milliliters because this one is just the top and the bottle is... What is it, about 30? Maybe 30 because sometimes the shape is deceiving and it can be like really roomy. A piece on the table <laughs> attracting attention. Right. And I believe you have it too. The one that is night. Yeah. Look at the presentation. It's so well done. And I wrote an article about the three in that collection. They're just lovely. They have got like those prints of the flowers inside because, of course, Jeff Lethem is a florist. That's a collection, Jeff Lethem. And yeah. there's three fragrances like that. Launched, right. and launched they, here. This top can be used as a vase. It's a very tiny vase, but in that well, article, didn't, um, didn't they have... Attention. There's yeah. not much room for a flower, but you can... No. It would hold like one bloom. On that article I wrote, the review of it, they ha I, there are some pictures on there of how they use them as vases. Very pretty. Just oh. basically one bloom, nice. but nice, yeah. And the material and actually the fragrance. So I have that night iris and I think that it's a very interesting fragrance. So it's fruity, a very intense, very dense fragrance. Yes. With a fruity top, like again, raspberry and... Uh, Iris and vetiver and stuff in the bottom. And together, they create such a soft, umbery textile impression. It's very jammy. And I like that word a lot, especially this time of year. I feel like it's got an earthy shade to it, I guess, from the iris. I didn't like it in heat. In the heat of the summer when I was testing these, it was not my favorite. It's not too sweet, though. Jammy mm -hmm. because it's dense, but because of the notes of flowers and spicy flowers and tobacco, it smells deep. There is a slightly plasticky component to it, though. And it might be that, I think, because it has the note red berries, which sometimes... Uh... I like plastic. It's very... <laughs> warm plastic. I start liking plastic oh, when I smelled and fell in love with um, Gucci fragrance. Gucci Rush, of course. Oh it smells God. maybe not like plastic, but smells a lot of furniture, polish. Oh, I love it. I kind of like the natural perfume smells. When something gets kind of synthetic, it causes me. So that in this night iris has a little bit of that like a small component. I test it and it does kind of wear down. Sometimes when I smell it, I think that I kind of don't smell anything, but I feel good. It's not very obvious and yet it influences you on some level. I have this actually beautiful bottle. It's olive and it's Kendall Jenner fragrance for Kim Kardashian line. There are three it's amber, yeah. blue, roan, and olive. Yeah, I remember seeing that blue one thinking, wow, that looks like it's going to stain fabrics. I have green and it doesn't stain. It has a lot of floral green components in it and amber, of course, aldehydes. But it doesn't smell green if you don't imagine it green. It's a jasmine, freesia sort of thing with an aldehydic citrus beginning and with some patchouli gives that with flowers give a little bit of green tinge to it i haven't smelled the rest of them but this one is okay it's a good fragrance casual every day nothing groundbreaking every fragrance we can just go through them and say this is bad this is good every fragrance leaves with you for some time and it soaks your events your life and it becomes precious even if it's just a soap or even if it's just a hairspray, it doesn't matter. So it's very personal. And this one it can be liked. When I said there are celebrities and celebrities, celebrities that you like, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to mention one celebrity line created by Richard Grant, a British actor. He has a special approach to fragrance creating. It's not like some big corporation approached him and said, you know what, let's do fragrances. He loved fragrances all his life and he wanted to create fragrances as he likes so he really invested his everything in those fragrances and he did it together with perfumer he was really involved in the end he got what he likes so he has four fragrances right now and he started with his signature fragrance it's a crazy interesting fragrance it's woody marijuana aromatic it's very unusual marijuana and maybe the only one that i can tolerate in fragrances like marijuana smoke or marijuana like it's more like green restless 
sourish. It's not ugly, <laughs> no. It's very interesting, but it doesn't satisfy you. You know, some fragrances satisfy you. Like, it's just you can't eat anymore. Like, it's already enough, everything what I want in this bottle. But there are fragrances that push you to explore, to go, to walk, to think. So this is that kind of fragrance. And the latest, it's called Richmond. I believe it was launched last year. It's a woody, balsamic, fireplace kind of fragrance. Very beautiful. And that line, his line, it's called Jack Perfume. Yeah, Jack Perfume because of uh, their flag, so British flag. He wanted to, for people to see that it's British brand, but he wanted to avoid that touristic vibe. And he did. It looks great. It's very British and it's not anything touristic. What's the price point? on that one uh it's just every niche brand i believe it's below 200 okay. but it's more than 100 so in that range 100 ml bottle very nice presentation it's just curious fragrances that totally different from usual celebrity lines and it's curated created founded by him oh that's neat i mean it's nice when you've got money to back stuff up like that it sounds expensive but if you're partnering with someone if, because the biggest budget to create a fragrance it's bottles and packaging oh really yes so the biggest part of the budget is the presentation i mean you don't have to put crazy expensive ingredients to create a nice fragrance it just depends on the talent of your perfumer or yourself i recommend this line just because it's nice fragrances and it's totally different approach it doesn't matter if he's celebrity or not he doesn't actually push himself in front of them he didn't even name it after them after himself it's just a nice perfume line that created because of love not because of money we have a nice interview before he was introduced his fragrances we have an interview made by susie nightingale and I put the link and we also have a couple of reviews of his fragrances. This is um, Dolly Parton's new one. It's a bright fluorescent coral color, which is totally different from the marketing pictures. It's really like shockingly bright. I actually like the cap. It's kind of hard to take on and off. And I've actually broken the butterfly off. <laughs> so don't don't touch the butterfly. <laughs> right, with the violence of removing this stuff. It's not as uh, neon as the butterfly on the cap. It is a very sweet one. It doesn't smell super maternal. Like, I was kind of surprised because I feel like when I read the notes, I think there's like fir tree. And I guess that's grounding it. It's pretty sweet and it doesn't really feel at all maternal. I remember yeah. smelling it. It was sweet, fruity floral, but it has something weird something different inside it twisting between fruits and flowers that smell different from what i think is fruity floral so there is something something unusual it's very powdery borderline like baby powdery and i'm making it smell sound like it smells bad it doesn't smell bad it smells good anybody could wear this and it's very non-offensive i think it doesn't get high rates of longevity because even on my blotter right now it's already fading away. So it's not very strong. The bottle is certainly kitschy. I personally kind of like it. I like that color and I like butterflies. And I mean, everybody likes Dolly. Very girly, yes. And it won't offend anybody because as soon as they smell it, they'll be like, did I smell that? Because it's kind of fleeting. Very, it's gone. But it's nice. I like when perfumes feel more than smell and the effect that you were talking about. Oh, she smells good. You don't even realize that she smells good. She is good. Like something about her is good, like inviting or fresh. That effect is precious. And I think that's what Dolly does as well. And she's marketed this with people have told her for years, oh, wow, you smell really good. And she gets her own scent with a mixture of, I think, uh, like lotions and perfumes and shower gels or powders or I don't know all kinds of stuff and I'm wondering if this is it what is good smell should it be like very different should it be captivating from the start because when we talk about celebrity fragrances it's mostly just nice smelling fragrances without pretension to be something to leave a word in perfumery Mm -hmm. to be liked by connoisseurs when you wear fragrance what you expect is just to smell good right and this kind of fragrances provide exactly that i have a couple of 
examples. The latest by Naomi Campbell. I like her line. It is a very nice bottle, by the way. It's here to stay. Fragrance launched last year. And that is the latest. It's satin. It's matte. Yeah. And it has its beauty legend and iconic passion. The bottle looks very tender, gentle, and the juice is pinky, almost like white, but it has that tinge, nice tinge of pink. So mm -hmm. when you hold it, it communicates gentleness. <laughs> softness and it smells exactly like that ironically my first perfume that was presented me by my husband was by naomi campbell it was neo magic it was uh -huh. just launched and i liked it and he saw it and then bought it to me first time somebody bought me perfume without me asking well, that was and nice I, and i love that perfume it changed unfortunately since that it was very very unusual powdery but aromatic and I don't know, there is something, again, restless about it that I liked. And this new one, fruity, fruity, musky fragrance, very subtle and clean. But you shouldn't apply too much because it will be an impossible. Once I applied too much and um, it wasn't good. <laughs> it didn't smell well on me. It's a rule for every perfume. It's better less than more. This one, based on a very nice opposition of fruits with their sweetness and sourness and the musky, fluffy base. And meeting together, they make such a beautiful combination that sometimes you can't describe but it's just nice it smells good you can't say much about it but this one is really really nice if you want something quiet something musky not mm -hmm. too powdery but powdery clean with a little bit of fruits but you will not percept them as fruits it's just something smooth how did you come by that because naomi campbell fragrances are pretty hard to come by in the u.s i believe i found it even on amazon or ebay oh. so it's my usual place to see something curious ebay and another one that is really close to that one it's another celebrity it's jessica simpson yeah i have it in this small bottle and it's the latest flanker or fancy line so it's fancy forever with a little butterfly as well the composition is also fruity musky but it's much more subtle fruitier and lighter it's also very beautiful fragrance that you wear as you say easy reach a little bit more sugary so naomi campbell is less sweet it's actually her fragrances they have that very uh, smart approach they always in trend so, and this is trend of subtle, uh, feminine, and nice fragrances that sweet, but not too sweet, fruity, but not too fruity. Everything is in perfect balance. Mm -hmm. Jessica Simpson is just like that, but if you want a little bit more transparent fruits in the top, because she, when you look at the pyramid of this fragrance with all these uh, apricots and raspberries and nice flowers, it's actually a lot of fruits, but it's not that fruity. Very transparent on a clean musky base. I too pulled a couple of uh, Jessica Simpson. I have her signature and then 10, which you can tell by the bottles. I think the 10 was a flanker of the signature. I've never been able to decide which one I prefer because they're both so similar. I think I think 10 is the one maybe with the white chocolate note. They're really sweet. And in fact, sitting here right now and spraying it for the first time in ages, I'm like, wow, that's really... It's interesting how sweet celebrity fragrances, I mean, they were sweet some time ago, like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and now they're getting less sweet, more aromatic, lighter, transparent, like maybe more muskier than before. When you smell celebrity fragrances, you can tell what is in right now. So what is fashionable at the moment? So they're quite good at following trends. I think those came out, what, 10, 12 years ago? But I like the bottles a lot. I don't have the full size one, but even the, I mean, they're just so cute. Mm -hmm. Very, they are. And the big ones, they feel really good in the hand because they're kind of like that bulb shaped bottle. I don't know. <laughs> I like to hold them. The like, stopper is interesting. Is it the leaf? Yeah, it's like a leaf that's folded around. It's and very like, cute. They're those happy, fun, carefree fragrances. Not going to offend anybody. If you like sweet stuff, right? They're different. They're subtly different. I remember parsing out the notes one. One's got 
nectarine and the other one's got raspberry or something. Yeah, one's got white chocolate and the other one coconut milk. But you can't, smelling it, you really can't even tell it. And it's already faded. Those notes, sometimes you smell them. Sometimes they just marketing. I have new one by Britney Spears. I'm glad that she's out of that conservatorship. So it's, it's always good to see people free. This is Fantasy Intense by Britney Spears. So it's the latest of her fantasy line. I remember first fragrances and they were just according to the trend, sweet, fruity. This one is again, sweet, confectionery sweet. Yeah, like a cupcake. I think that's what her original one was, like kiwi and cupcake or something, right? It has a very trustworthy, interesting, nice, very distinct note of cotton candy with that roughness. When you eat it, you first, before it melts, you feel the roughness, some scratchiness yeah. in your mouth. So it has that very tactile note. I like mm -hmm. it. So You and I would be a good team at charades. <laughs> like, can you guess what I'm thinking? I like when... You can describe it with things that you can relate to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fragrances evoke so many associations that you wouldn't even expect. So I have two from Madonna. Yeah, Did you have Madonna's music in the USSR? Of course, she was a huge star. You and I are of a similar age. I loved Madonna. I have two of her scents. Um, I have True or Dare. Truth or, or Dare Naked. Because uh -huh. the, the Truth or Dare one is the white floral. Very heavy yeah. tuberose. Because she was inspired by those grand tuberose fragrances. Very tuberose. Yes. It's, it's loud fragrance. And that's one thing that I want to say about Kim Kardashian. Because her early efforts like with the kim kardashian that black bottle with the two k's that was a not her line it was a license with some company yes. a lot of people like it but to me it was way too much and that's the way i feel about madonna's truth or dare but i do like naked it's got a lot of like ambery smell mm -hmm. it's not even remotely close to truth or dare it's just in the similar bottle which by the way discontinued i believe so if you see it on ebay or whatever you might want to get your hands on it this one right here madame x this is her newest one that came out i think about a year ago. Supposedly, there were only 400 bottles created, so it's very limited edition. This is powerful stuff. It's not like Naked or Truth or Dare at all. It is huge. Madame X, I think it's got like incense, very spicy with incense. There might be some rose. It's not the rose like gentle, tender, bud this is a come hither let's get on with it right now kind of rose i'm glad i have this in my collection because it's definitely unique and for me it's hard to wear because this is not a virginal scent mm -hmm. this is a woman who knows what she likes she goes after it she is out every night partying having fun and she might even be a little bit of a dominatrix it's got a little bit of a sex smell to it like there's that that ripe kind of body undercurrent to it it's definitely carnal it really is. It's unique. And I don't think that I have the personality to wear the scent. It's very Madonna. It's very brash, very bold. And I'm wondering if it's similar to the Fenty. That's why when you were talking about Fenty before, I'm like, I wonder if that's like Madame X because... I will definitely compare them. So I don't yeah. have Madonna fragrance at the moment, but it's curious to compare. And it has cinnamon. That might be that kind of spicy stuff. It's big and it lasts forever especially on clothes. I'll spray it and then I'll put my coat on. You don't want to wear this in hot weather. This is cold weather only. Otherwise it will suffocate you and everybody else. I put my coat on and it rubs against my wrist and it's on my coat for days. It's very strong. When you apply it on uh, clothes, so the fragrance stays longer. That's for yeah, sure. I don't even think it would wash out. Honestly, I've had a couple of rose fragrances before. Rose seems particularly tenacious and I've had some before that they they won't wash out after a couple of washings. So it's a rose-centered perfume, so it's still a rose, right? Because before yeah. she had tuberose, so yeah. now she shifted to, so like changed everything. 
and maybe discontinued everything because yeah. it was also licensed. Rose, like sexy, almost honey, lots of incense in there. It's different. Just like with her previous two fragrances, she creates it with a cutie, but started all new. And what is bad about celebrity fragrances is that they tend to get discontinued really quick. But what is good about them is that they are usually cheaper than designer fragrances and more accessible. It yeah. depends who is the distributor and the uh, company that produces. In the case of Kim Kardashian, like... On her website, they frequently run sales and offer promotions all the time. I think if you sign up with your email and text message, they'll send you $10 off. So they're always running sales. I think I got most of my bottles at 20 bucks or so. She mm-hmm. works with the perfumers from Shivadan, at least mm-hmm. for some of the fragrances. And they use good ingredients, so she's a really good business lady. I would like to show a couple more fragrances. I have this Paloma Picasso fragrance and that is her first. I bought it after I read article by Victoria on our website about Paloma. It's a history about her life, about her creativity and uh, she's a designer. She's not a celebrity. As you said, it's very hard to divide because she's a designer. Designer of jewelry and costumes for theater. You can read in the article about her. It's really interesting to see how she as a daughter of great painter tried to do her own things and live her life as her not as a daughter of some famous guy Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pablo Picasso and the other one that I wanted to say that I really like it's a Catherine Deneuve fragrance it's not I guess for that time very new one because it smells a lot like a mixture of several perfumes that were trendy at the time I pick up something from Miss Dior something even from Chanel number five but mostly Dior and that shipper fragrances i like it but it didn't leave long that fragrance she still is more popular and and more known for her advertisement for chanel not for her own fragrance right is it discontinued yes a long time ago celebrity fragrances yeah they are like that they don't leave long i think you could just talk forever about celebs i'm sure we'll get comments down below that say i can't believe you didn't talk about (laughs) jennifer lopez or Oh, what about Shania Twain? Great, or... Good fragrances. And the new one was just launched. And her first one, Jennifer Lopez, it was still, I believe, it was a good one. I had that one. That was tea. I don't want to smell fresh like tea, really. I didn't love that one. I thought her first one was like glow. Yes, most probably. I just started to pay attention when she launched still and I had it. And it was fragrance that is very enjoyable. And maybe now when I smell it, I would like it even more because it's different from what we have now. But at the time, it was perfectly in line with everything around. I don't know. Her stuff's okay for me. That's what is the definition. Okay. <laughs> Most of the time, celebrity <laughs> fragrances. I would like to quickly mention, it's not yet in our database, but it will be a fragrance for hair. So it's called... Gizu, I hope I pronounce it right. And this fragrance is created by Instagram influencer and her name is Negin Mirsalehi. So excuse me if I pronounce her name wrong, but this is the best I can. <laughs> It's a cute little bottle. This is fragrance Sephora brand and her brand is hair cosmetic brand. She also known for honey plantations. Her family does that business. And this fragrance for hair infused with honey, allegedly from her (laughs) own honey. Does it smell like honey? It does. It costs $40 for, let me see, 50, 50. It's just very like roomy. It smells like honey, but very moist mixed with the juices of citruses and mandarin sweet Mm. juice not too sweet not too fresh and it smells very good on hair so i tried to spray it on my hand and try to discover it that way but the best way is really to spray it on hair and hair will smell like you use some very chic nice shampoo Mm. and just went out of the shower so it lingers in the air, like a smell of well-groomed lady. So it's, it's really, really beautiful, inoffensive. It has a short distance of its radiance. It's very enjoyable. And 
as it said, the best it smells on hair. So far, she has only that uh, fragrance product and a bunch of other cosmetic stuff. And I didn't honestly even knew who she was because I'm not on Instagram and I'm not into influencer stuff. But so this one is really something else, something different and enjoyable fragrance with a note of honey, which is rare. Usually honey is to your face very sweet and animalic and even dirty. I like that kind of accord too. Sometimes it's very well orchestrated inside other notes, like for example, Soir de Lune mm -hmm. by Cicely. But this one is, it's not even close <laughs> to oh. Cicely or any other honey fragrance. It's just very nice with a honey as a little nuance inside very moist, fresh fragrance of flowers. Like field flowers is the main subject of it. It's a nice one to smell and it's, uh, you can find it, I guess, I believe in every Sephora. Gizu means woman's hair in Persian. She is Persian by origin and she lives in Amsterdam. Her hairline named as woman's hair. It's interesting how they have different words for men's hair and woman's hair since it's women's hair. So I suppose they have a different name for men's hair. The fragrance is really nice. At least it gives you fresh, a like groomed, nice feeling and also hydrated. That's mm -hmm. the word for that. Oils in there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it has all kind of stuff, of, of course, and that honey from her own plantation. Let's believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So we went through really quickly some celebrity fragrances, and I would like to see your suggestions of something that is good, something that is affordable and good. And we didn't even mention Ariana Grande. I thought about bringing out Cloud. We can say in short that her fragrances replicate trends and big perfumes really good. That's my opinion. So if you like Baccarat, you can find something in the air of Baccarat. The Cloud. Yeah. In general, if you like some popular fragrance, there is a good chance that you can find it among some celebrity line. True. <laughs> At least the trends, for sure. I like fruity florals, but I'm getting bored with them. I believe in great potential of fruity florals. Just like with gourmands, they are transforming into something complex. Sometimes it's just wrong when they try to make a gourmand interesting and they put some savory stuff, try to make it complex, and it just doesn't go. It just, mm -hmm. just smells ugly and bad and like messy. Phantom? Again, uh, yeah, that example of really messy perfume. It's it's not supposed to be gourmand, but it smells like something, something this, something that. But I believe that gourmands and fruity florals, they have great potential. For example, we don't have really many apricot, beautiful osmanthus-like fragrances. And osmanthus flower is the good example of fruity floral because the flower smells fruity and floral. Absolute smells leathery and dirty and something hay, but the flower mm -hmm. is great. Thinking only about Osmantus, I already believe that there is such a great potential. I actually, it's funny because I just got a swap from another forum member yesterday and I swapped for Jeremy Fragrance One, The Day for Women. Because oh. I haven't been able to get my nose on any of his stuff. And I looked at the notes and I'm like, yeah, it could work. And it is apricot, jasmine, vanilla, benzoin. It is very apricot-y. I thought it was osmanthus, but it's apricot. It's very fruity. It's really sweet at the top, but the dry down is very pleasant. And it's, it's called day for women, but I feel like the dry down is pretty good. I will try to, so I will actually contact him because <laughs> it's great that his line is doing well and he keeps producing. He's a famous guy now but still when you are alone on your own it's not that easy especially with advertisement and pushing it right. sales and everything yeah. yeah i wish him luck i mean it's not the guy that i listen but he has his big audience i probably should have mentioned demi rawlings perfume as well with fragrance dubois and uh i wrote the article on her stuff last February or so. And it's really good. I've been waiting to pull that out because it's kind of spicy for fall. It's got 
coffee and caramel. It's good. I like it. I get irritated with people. They don't like the perfume just because of the person. Oh, that's uh, me. <laughs> I can say I don't like the person. I mean, I don't like the image sometimes, or it's not close yeah. to me, or I can't like take them seriously. Yeah, that's me. I can have a little of that too, but in general, I try to be a little... It's good to be open-minded, that's for sure. To try at least, and I think it's because I'm just so curious. I really just want to smell and see and touch and know everything. I want to get familiar with so many things. And the only way to do that is to experience the smells. They're not all good. They're not all bad. That's a good approach. When you just try to detach the scent from the person and enjoy the scent. We talked about many people, <laughs> many we fragrances. Did. And we expect that you will write something about your favorite celebrity fragrances. See you guys. Bye. Bye, Bye Beth. Bye, Ellen.